Welcome, and thank you for joining me on the LGPS Schemes Basics webcast brought to you as part of Pensions Awareness Week. So whether you're a new member to the scheme wishing to learn about the scheme, or you're an existing member just looking to top up your understanding. My name is Richard Quinn, and I'm one of the designated pension fund representatives who make up the employer relations team, and I will be guiding you through this presentation. The purpose of this presentation is to provide you with an overview of the LGPS and how your pension builds up. It will also outline the key benefits of being in the scheme, not only for you, but also for your loved ones. At the end of this presentation, I will provide an overview of the resources available to you where you can find further information on all aspects of the scheme you're contributing to and also how to get in contact with WYPF if you have any further questions and would like to discuss this further. Today's session is split into two parts. In part one, I'll provide you with an introduction to My Pension, which is your online portal to view your pension details, update your contact details, update your death grant nominations, and review your documents, such as your annual pension statement, to help you to manage your pension account. This not only allows you access to key information in relation to your pension account, it helps you to ensure that the data we hold in respect of your pension is accurate and up to date. And when regularly reviewed, it means there aren't any unsuspecting queries later down the line, which may delay the payment of your pension at retirement. I will cover the key benefits of the scheme, just to emphasize that there are so many more benefits than just building a pension pot for your retirement. It's not only the benefits for you, but how this can give you peace of mind to know that your loved ones are taken care of financially if there is anything to happen to you. I will also go on to explain how the LGPS pension works, how it's calculated and how your pension builds up over time. This can really help to improve your understanding of how your pension works and better prepare you for planning for your retirement. It's never too early to prepare for your retirement and I will also cover how you can increase your pension benefits at retirement. I will talk about the 50-50 scheme, which is part of the flexibility brought into the scheme. So for anyone who feels like paying into the scheme is not affordable or due to circumstances don't feel paying into the pension scheme is something you're able to do at the moment, <clears throat> I'll discuss the alternative to coming out of the scheme. I will also talk you through your annual pension statements. Then in the second part of this presentation, I will cover the various resources that's available to you to help understand your pension further and the resources available to answer any questions you may have throughout your pension journey. If you are still unsure of anything, don't worry, help is at hand. I will cover the various ways in which you can contact WYPF, your pension administrators, if you do not have any questions, if you do have any questions. I would first of all like to make you aware of the My Pension online portal that you have access to. My Pension is our secure, interactive service that lets you view your pension details online and make changes to your personal information. From the online portal, you can view your membership details, update your contact details, update your death grant nominations, and access your documents in respect of your pension, such as your annual pension statement. The portal is easy to navigate using the main four tabs along the top once you've logged in. So you have the membership details tab, the personal details tab, change my account and view my documents. How can you get signed up to my pension? If you've not already signed up to my pension, the process for registering is made simple by following the on screen steps and visiting www.wypf.org dot uk and clicking on the my pension tab along the top of the screen in addition we've also put together a short tutorial video guiding you how to register and you can also access the my pension quick start manual and frequently asked questions for further information if you do have any issues in registering or accessing my pension online then please contact the contact center on 01274 434 The online poll is designed to give you a snapshot of your pension, which not only gives you the opportunity to review your pension details, but also ensure the information that we hold is accurate and up to date. By carrying out regular checks, this ensures the information we hold is accurate and up to date, but also means there won't be any unnecessary delays when it eventually comes to processing your retirement benefits. 
and may mean we need to seek further clarification from your employer. Being a member of the LGPS is so much more than a pension for you at retirement. There are several key benefits which are designed to not only provide you with a pension at retirement, but to give you peace of mind that in the event anything should happen to you, there is protection for you and your loved ones. So the key benefits are it provides you with a secure pension. You receive tax relief by paying into the scheme. You can access a tax free lump sum at retirement. There is ill health cover, so if you're unwell to continue working, there is cover for that built into the scheme. There is life cover, so in the event of your death. <clears throat> Survivor's pension, so your peace of mind that your loved ones are taken care of. And ultimately, there is the retirement pension. I will provide an overview of each of the key benefits in the following slides. So providing you've been a member of the scheme for two years or more, you become entitled to a pension at retirement. There is flexibility built into the scheme as to how and when you can access your pension on an age related basis. So you are able to access your pension from age 55 right up to age 75 without the need for your employer's approval. Please note that the earliest you can access your pension is expected to change from 2028 to a minimum of age 57. <clears throat> the scheme works on the assumption that you would ac your, access your pension at your normal pension age or state pension age, depending when you started building your LGPS pension. If you decide that you would like to access your pension benefits before your norm normal pension age, as you'll be accessing your benefits earlier than anticipated, Early reduction factors will apply and these are based on the number of years early you are retiring from your normal pension age or state pension age. There is also a way to access your benefits early by what are referred to as employer initiated retirements. First, you have flexible retirement. So this is where if you reduce your hours or grade and are over the age of 55, you can access the immediate payment of your pension benefits and continue working at your employer. Secondly, you've got redundancy and business efficiency. Again, if you're age 55 or over, allows you to access early payment of your pension benefits unreduced. If you are under age 55 and made redundant, then you would become entitled to a deferred benefit. This means we will calculate your benefits at the date of leaving and they will be inflation proof to the point you wish to access them. In the event you're unable to continue working due to ill health, you can access early payment of your pension from any age. There are certain eligibility conditions which will need to be met and will require an independent medical registered practitioner to review your case and determine that you meet the eligibility conditions. They will also determine what tier of ill health you will be awarded. The severity of your illness and likelihood of undertaking gainful employment will impact the level of benefits that are awarded. The second key benefit of the scheme is that you are provided with a secure pension at retirement. So the LGPS is a defined benefit scheme, which means the way your pension is calculated is stipulated in the scheme regulations. The local government pension scheme is a guaranteed comprehensive package of benefits, which is backed by law. This means that how your pension is calculated is built into the scheme regulations and doesn't depend on investment returns like some private pension schemes. The value of your pension is guaranteed. In addition, your pension is inflation proofed. This means that it's linked to the consumer price index CPI to retain its value in line with the cost of living. So this means if you like to treat yourself to your favorite takeaway coffee now, you will be able to afford to do so in the future. Your pension is also payable for life. The contributions you make attract tax relief and therefore tax is deducted after your pension contributions has been taken from your pay. This means you pay less tax. This is all done automatically by your employer at source and means you don't have to worry about it. As well as contributing to the cost of building your pension for retirement, your employer contributes towards this cost also. At retirement, you also have the option to exchange pension to provide you with a tax free lump sum on a conversion for every one pound of pension you swap. This gives you 12 pounds of lump sum. 
So when it comes to retirement, if you feel that a smaller annual pension would suit your own situation or affordability, you can increase the lump sum you can receive by converting pension to lump sum, giving you access to a lump sum to use as you see fit. So whether that's going traveling, looking at home improvements, or even helping out loved ones. HMRC does set a limit on the maximum lump sum of 25% of the capital value of accrued rights. So we will ask you for additional information at retirement just to ensure you do not exceed these limits. The LGPS has provision to pay an ill health pension known as ill health retirement. So in order to be granted an ill health pension, a formal process must be followed. Firstly, the severity of your illness and the effect this has on your ability to work both now and in the future would be assessed by an independent registered medical practitioner who would be appointed by your employer. If approved, this would then be used to determine the level of benefits awarded. So depending on the severity of your illness and the likelihood of you undertaking gainful employment, there are three different levels of ill health. If approved, you will receive immediate payment of your pension benefits unreduced and depending on the level of ill health, an enhancement may also be applied to your pension to account for the fact you are not able to work until your normal pension age. Again, your ill health pension is inflation proofed to ensure it retains its value. In the event of your death, the scheme offers life cover, which can offer peace of mind in the knowledge that your loved ones are provided for in the event of your death. As an active member of the scheme, the death in service benefit will be paid as a lump sum death grant equal to three times your annual pensionable salary. When you become a pensioner, although your pensionable is payable for life, it does also offer a 10 year guarantee. This basically means should you die within the first 10 years of receiving your pension, the balance of those 10 years worth of pension would be payable as a lump sum death grant. <clears throat> After the 10 year period, no death grant would be payable in the event of your death. However, there would still be provision for dependence benefits subject to meeting the necessary criteria. It is important that you nominate who you wish to receive any potential death grant. This could be a partner, brother or sister, a parent or a child, or even a charity of your choice. And this can be done via the My Pension Online portal and amended at any future date should your circumstances change. <clears throat> As mentioned earlier, the LGPS offers benefits in addition to providing you a pension at retirement. In addition to a lump sum death grant, the scheme offers survivors benefits which can provide an additional income to your loved ones providing financial security. Entitlement to survivor's benefits starts from the day you join the scheme. A survivor's pension is payable to your spouse, civil partner, eligible cooperating partner, and there is also a provision for a child's pension payable to any eligible child at the date of your death. So let's look at joining the LGPS. As a new employee with your employer, they provide you entry into the LGPS, which allows you to contribute to a work-based pension and save towards your retirement. This may not be something you're naturally thinking of when joining your employer, but the great news is they do this automatically for you and doesn't involve a lot of work from you. As long as you meet the eligibility criteria, so that you have a contract of three months or more, you're under the age of 75, and you're not eligible to join another public sector pension scheme, such as the teacher's pension scheme, they will contractually enrol you into the LGPS. This means that once we as the scheme administrators have been informed by your employer that you are a new joiner, we will create a pension record for you which is linked to your employment. It's important to note that under the scheme regulations, we are required to create a separate pension record for each eligible role you hold. So if you have more than one role with your employer, you will have more than one pension record created and you will build up a pension account for each role. So what will it cost? The only cost to being a member of the scheme is your monthly pension contribution, which is deducted from your pay. Your contribution rate is calculated based on your full time salary, and this also applies to part time workers too. The table shows the different salary bands and the percentage contribution rates that would apply depending on your earnings. 
So we can look from this table, anything up to and including £15,000 would mean your contribution rate will be 5.5% and this will be deducted from your pay automatically by your employer. As you progress through your career and your earnings increase, you will potentially move through the different bands and your contribution rate will also incrementally, in, incrementally increase. Your employer will reassess your contribution rate each April to ensure you are paying the correct amount. The contributions you pay do attract tax relief and we'll look at this on the next slide. And it should also be noted that your employer does also make a significant contribution into the fund too on your behalf. Employer contribution rates are set by the actuary following a triennial valuation. So let's look at how much it actually costs to be a member of the scheme. As I mentioned, your pension contribution attracts tax relief, meaning they are taken from your pay before tax is deducted. So let's look at the true cost by working through these two examples. Based on a salary of £18,000, the contribution rate for this member would be 5.8%. The example on the left shows a monthly salary of £1,500 and the tax deduction of £90.50. Once national insurance has been deducted, the net pay for this person is £1,325.18. Now, the example on the right shows the same monthly salary, but this person is a member of this pension scheme paying £87 worth of pension contributions. However, as it attracts tax relief, the tax they pay is only £73.10. So after national insurance has been deducted, their net pay is £1,255.88. <clears throat> As you can see, the actual cost of the pension is not the £87 you would first think, and it's only £69.60 per month, which equates to 4.6%, much less costly than it first appears. So the key difference here is at retirement, you will have built up a pension pot on top of the reduced tax, which will allow you to have additional income and afford the life you like to live in retirement, whatever that may be. From the 1st of, 1st of April 2014, the LGPS changed to a career average revalued earning scheme known as a care scheme. This means that the pension builds up on average of the pay that you receive throughout your career. So for each year you work, we look at how much pensionable earnings you received and take that figure and divide that by a 49th, which is the accrual rate of the scheme. The accrual rate is simply the rate at which your pension builds up. If you're in the 50-50 section of the care scheme, the accrual rate would be a 98th and would mean you build up half of the pension you would build up if you'd been in the main scheme. Again, your pension is revalued in line with inflation each year. So each year, the annual pension you purchase is revalued in line with inflation based on the consumer price index known as CPI. This allows the pension to retain its value through to retirement in line with the cost of living. So if you can afford your favourite takeaway coffee now, you will be able to in the future. So if we look at the example on the slide, the pensionable pay this member's received is 25,000 per annum. The accrual rate, if they're in the main scheme, is a 49th. So a 49th of 25,000 would purchase an annual pension of £510.20. If the member was in the 50-50 scheme, the accrual rate would be a 98th and would mean he would build up half the pension had they been in the main care scheme. So for each year, using a 49th of 25,000, this member would build up £510.20, which is added to their pension pot. You will see that the grey section is the earned pension for that particular year, which then becomes the blue opening balance of your pension account for the following year. The orange section is the inflation, and each section is added to your total pension pot that you are building each year. So now let's have a look at how your pension will build up each year and over time. So as explained, each year from the 1st of April to the 31st of March, you're in the scheme year, we take the average pensionable pay and divide that by a 49th in the main scheme or a 98th if you're in the 50-50. This is the amount of pension that you will build up for that year. So the pension built up in year one 
is £428.57, to which we will add inflation of £8.57 to account for the cost of living and allows your pension to retain its value. At the end of the year, we apply the CPI to inflation proof your pension and then this gives us the closing balance at the end of the scheme year. So you will see the total account at the end of year one is £437.14. <clears throat> the closing balance of the previous year is brought forward and is added to your pension pay you would build up in the second year as your opening balance. The pension you build up in the year of £437.14 now gives you a total at the 31st of March of £874.29. The cost of living is added to this amount at the end of each scheme year. So £17.49 is added onto your total and your new updated total at the end of year two is £891.77. This then continues for each year you are in the scheme. <clears throat> if we say you're in the scheme for 40 years, we've carried out the same exercise as the previous two slides for each year up to 40 years. You will see that the annual pension you've built up in your pension account is £37,852.11, which at retirement is quite a substantial amount given you've not had a lot to do in managing it, as it's all done at source by your payroll department, can really help give you an idea of the value of being in a pension scheme, especially considering you've received tax relief throughout that time whilst actively contributing to your pension scheme. If you think back to the what will it cost me slide, the person not paying into a pension was only £69 better off a month, but then doesn't have a pension pot they've built up on top of that. Hopefully that really does demonstrate the benefit of contributing towards a pension and can give you peace of mind that the monthly contributions you pay are working towards your retirement. <clears throat> For anyone who may be considering or feel that they can't afford to be in the pension scheme due to your circumstances, I just want to advise you of the 50-50 option available in the scheme. In the 50-50 section, you are still building a pension for retirement. It's just that you are building up half the amount of pension compared to the main scheme. Instead, your pension builds up at a rate of 198. You still have access to all the key benefits. So you still have access to ill health cover. You still have access to full life cover. You can move back into the main section at any time. So if in the short term it doesn't suit your situation or circumstances, then the 50-50 option is a really good alternative to coming out of the pension scheme altogether. If you have any periods of sickness, injury or child related leave, then following any period of nil pay, you'll be brought back into the main section. And also as part of auto enrollment, you'll be brought back into the main scheme. So auto enrollment is the government initiative designed to ensure that you're saving for your retirement. <clears throat> so the slide you see on your screen is designed to give you a snapshot of what the benefits you can build up in either the main scheme or 50-50 scheme and provide a comparison of the potential benefits you could build up. So as explained earlier, if you are in the 50-50 scheme, you are effectively building up half the benefits as you would in the main scheme. <clears throat> However, the key thing to remember is that you are still building a pension for retirement and you're still retaining all the key benefits that come with being a member of the main scheme and that I touched on earlier in this presentation. So if considering you do not wish to be a member of the scheme or you feel it isn't affordable at the moment, please do bear in mind that you have the 50-50 option rather than not being a member of a pension scheme and not building a pension pot at retirement. <clears throat> Also, if you feel this isn't something you can afford at the moment, think about what retirement would be like if you're not working and don't have an additional income coming in like the pension you can potentially build up. <clears throat> Your annual pension statement is a legal requirement that we must provide you with each year and it shows the current value of your pension. On your pension statement, it will provide you with the confirmation of your final salary benefits under Section A. So this is for anyone who's a member of the LGPS prior to the 1st of April 2014. It confirms your service, the rate of pay used to calculate your benefits, and regularly reviewing this to ensure we've used the correct information will help ensure that we provided you the 
accurate calculation of your benefits. Section B shows the value of your care pension scheme. So these are benefits you've built up from the 1st of April 2014 to present. Your total annual pension payable is then the total of Section A and Section B added together. The reason they are shown separately is due to the fact that the way we calculate your benefits is different. To assist you in planning for your retirement, your annual pension statement contains four estimates, which are designed to give you an indication of what the potential value of retirement benefits will be at key ages. So you have age 55, age 60, age 65 and your state pension age. This will give you an indication of the potential benefits you can expect. It provides you with a standard amount of pension your benefits will provide and also show what your benefits would look like if you converted pension into the maximum lump sum. So even though you, if you think that the value doesn't look like it will tie in with your lifestyle you would like, there are options available to you as members for topping up your pension benefits. I will cover these in the next slide. As a member of the LGPS, you have access to two tax efficient ways of increasing your pension benefits, in addition to the benefits you are already building up. These are additional pension contributions known as APCs, which is a way of buying extra pension directly into the LGPS itself. The other option is additional voluntary contributions known as AVCs. This allows you to build up a pot of money with a third party provider such as Prudential, which is then used to provide benefits in addition to those provided by your local government pension scheme once you retire. So APCs, so this is the additional pension contributions, are a way to purchase extra LGPS pension. The contributions you make attract tax relief up to 100% of your taxable earnings. You can choose to pay for the extra pension by spreading the payments over a number of complete years or by paying a one-off lump sum. If you are in the main section of the LGPS, you can pay an additional contributions to buy up to a maximum of £7,352 £7, of extra pension. AVCs. So additional voluntary contributions, these are provided by a third party AVC provider and a list of providers for each fund can be found on our website. An AVC allows you to build up a pot of money which can be later used to increase the amount of tax free cash you receive at retirement or be used to purchase additional pension. You can pay up to 100% of your pension will pay into an in-house AVC and as the contributions are deducted directly from your pay before your tax is worked out, you receive tax relief automatically. Your AVC contributions are invested by the AVC provider in line with your instructions. So you therefore decide how the money in your pot is to be invested. When the time comes and you retire, your AVCs must be paid at the same time as your LGPS pension. The disinvestment of an AVC does add an extra step in the retirement process, and this is something to be aware of if you have an AVC and are approaching retirement. <clears throat> so let's quickly recap on what the key benefits of the scheme are. So you've got a secure pension, you're receiving tax relief as a result of contributing to the pension. You can access a tax free lump sum at retirement. There's ill health cover. Life cover. And survivors pension and obviously flexibility when you can access your pension. I would just like to make you aware of some of the additional resources that are available to you and to aid your understanding of the LGPS and can also assist you when you do start to look at and plan for retirement. You can access the WYPF website, which has a wealth of information in relation to your pension. There is a dedicated website from the local government actuary, which is a member designated website designed to provide you with an additional information to help you understand your pension. And the final two resources are websites that you can access to assist when it comes to retiring and planning the life you would like to live. So the Retirement Living Standards website helps you to picture what kind of lifestyle you could have in retirement. And the Money Helper website makes it quicker and easier to find the right help and offer support and guidance on all financial matters.
If you have any specific questions or still require some assistance, then please do get in contact with our contact centre team who will assist you. The contact details you can use are displayed on the slide on the screen. You can contact the contact centre on the team mailbox at pensions at wypf.org.uk. You can call the contact centre helpline 01274 434 And as stated before, you can also access the WYPF website where we have a wealth of information should you wish to read up further on your pension. I just want to finish off with the disclaimer. So this presentation is issued by West Yorkshire Pension Fund to assist the stakeholders and partners associated with West Yorkshire Pension Fund. This information has been prepared on the fund's current understanding of the scheme regulations. Therefore, it should not be treated as a complete authoritative statement of the law. Users may wish or will need to take their own legal advice on the interpretation of any particular regulations. No responsibility whatsoever will be assumed by the fund for any liability, financial or otherwise incurred by stakeholders relying on this statement. The fund does not accept any responsibility for reliance on the contained or referred to in this guidance. And finally, thank you for joining me in today's session. Hopefully that gives you a bit more information in regards to the LGPS and understanding the key benefits and how your pension benefits have worked out. So I'd just like to thank you for joining me.